Hi, this is Joe Jordan. I'd like to welcome you back to our course on programming with ASP.NET Core 2.1 and React. And in this section, we're going to talk about crafting the new UI. Specifically, in this video, we're going to create the new UI in React. And some of what we're doing, well, in fact, the entirety of what we're doing, is crafting the new UI for our application using JSX. Now, at this point, you're probably wondering, what is JSX? And that's a valid question. JSX, we find used almost entirely with React. And it's a syntax extension to JavaScript. So it makes it look like the JavaScript itself is HTML in a string. There's an example where it says const test equals then the opening h1 tag, hi there, closing h1 tag. You probably recognize the h1 tag as HTML. You recognize the const test equals as standard JavaScript. And combining the two together, we see JSX. So that's what we're going to be working with in the new UI is JSX. Now, enough of me talking about JSX and crafting the new UI. Let's jump right into the UI. Now, I've already written it, so we're not going to be looking at writing anything new. And I'll show you how the new UI is going to work and how the JSX inside it is going to work. So to start our demo, of course, we'll open up our Villainy application in Visual Studio again. And I'm going to start by talking about the routing that's going to happen in our application, because we need to be able to jump from one page to another. And the best way to do that is to have a navigation menu. The application already has one created, but it was written for a previous version of Bootstrap. So we're going to write this for Bootstrap 4, and I'm going to show you what the nav bar is going to look like in HTML. So we'll open up the nav menu.js file, and you can see I've got a few imports up at the top, React, Link Container, nav menu CSS, because in this version we can actually import CSS as a standard library. And you notice that we start with export default props. This is called a stateless container in React. And this is going to allow us to export our JSX, which you're seeing starting at line eight. It's going to allow us to export that as a React object. So you see up at the top, we've got the nav class that starts our navigation bar. Then we contain it in a div, which is collapse navbar collapse class and that's going to allow us to collapse our navbar when it gets too small for the screen to show then just below that we see a ul which is an unordered list and that's styled to look like a navigation bar then the ul contains li's you're used to that in html those are line items and those contain link container objects and the link container comes from the React Router Bootstrap application that allows us to tie our link containers into our React Router. That link container, the first one you see, is to slash exact. That to forward slash tells it go to basically home. And the exact means that we are exactly matching forward slash. So if it says like forward slash me, that's not exact. It has to be forward slash. That's exact and that'll take us to home. And you'll see that when we get into the testing in the, the next video. Below that, you see we've got a link container to slash fellow villains, and that takes us to our villains page. Then you'll see the slash my profile, which takes us to the me page. And then you'll see the sign in, which isn't going to work yet. We're going to make that work in a future video, but that is going to be there, so we'll be able to sign it in. And that's gonna take us to our sign in page. You're probably wondering at this point, we've got all these two forward slash, two slash fellow villains, two slash my profile. How does that work? How does the application know where those are? Let me show you. Let's open up app.js, which I've got open here. And you see in app.js, we've got our standard imports again, of course. But then down below that, we have a layout. And that layout contains our routes. So route exact path equals forward slash takes us to our home component. And I'll show you the home component here shortly. That's another React component that has JSX in it. Fellow villains, again, that takes us to the fellow villains component. Villain slash ID takes us to fellow villains as well. But that one looks a little different. We're actually going to have that go to fellow villains. We're not going to have it go to villain slash ID. Uh, in fact, 
Let's make that change now while I'm thinking about it, otherwise bad things will come from it, and it will never work properly. Now it should work. So it says slash fella villain slash ID. That ID is just a query string. So if we go to slash fellow villains, it will show all of our villains. Whereas if we go to slash fellow villains slash five, it will only show us the fifth villain that we have in its own separate page. That's going to be coming in a later module as well. Then we have slash my profile, which takes us to the my profile page or the my profile component, I should say. And we have slash sign in takes us again to my profile. So let's take a look at some of these components that we have set up because we're going to slash, which takes us to the home component. That's first. So let's go to the home component. And here you can see that it is, again, a stateless component. That, of course, means that we've got it written as const home equals props with the arrow function. That arrow function is like an anonymous function. It's a function without a name. And props is the input to that function. So if you look at the JSX, which starts on line 5 with slash div, you can see it's all written just like HTML. So you know exactly how it's going to look on the page, where it says, hello, fellow villains, welcome to villainy. Here you can do this stuff, unordered list, li. It's all standard HTML looking code, but it's all written as a string in JavaScript. So that is our JSX. Then down at the bottom, we have our export default connect home. That export default is JavaScript, and that's telling us to export this module so other modules can see it. Connect comes from something we're going to work with a little later. That comes from Redux, and that connects our component here to the Redux store. And it's telling it to connect home to the Redux store. Now, there's nothing to connect, so we're not actually connecting anything, but Redux requires that since it's already built in. So that's our home module. Let's take a look at another simple one, which is my profile module. And this is really basic. It works exactly the same. We are creating the const of my profile with the input of props. We have a div, we have an h1, a couple of paragraphs, and then we're exporting. So pretty much just like home. There's some stuff that's not just like home though. So let's take a look at fellow villains. This one gets a little bit more interesting because here, Right now, we're just storing all of our villains in the all villains variable. And that's actually an array of objects. And if you're used to JavaScript, then you're used to what an, an array of objects is. So each villain has a name, they have powers, and they have hobbies. Scrolling down a bit, you can see I've got my const fellow villains equals props arrow function div h1 of fellow villains. And then in braces, I've got render villains called as a method. It has to be put in braces because if we didn't put it in braces, that would just get rendered as text. It would say render villains parentheses on the page. We want that to be executed as soon as JavaScript hits that line. So here's the function for rendering our villains. You can see I'm creating a table with a header with open heads, name, powers, and hobbies. Then we get into the table body, which is what the T body is. And I'm taking the all villains and I'm running that through a map function. Now, if you're used to JavaScript, you may be used to that map function. You may not be used to it. What map does is it takes everything from the input that we give it. So this is all villains and it runs it against the code inside our anonymous function. So in this case, we're taking all villains and we're going by each villain, which is what that villain arrow means. And for each villain, we're creating a row with three cells with the villain name, the villain powers, and the villain hobbies. In React, everything that is a sequence requires a key. And that's what that key equals villain.name is. It needs something that is unique. And each villain name is unique. We could give it a villain ID as well. But here the villain name is unique, so we'll be able to use the villain name as the key, and that makes each row unique. So if we didn't have that key, if we brought up our console in Chrome or Edge or Firefox, whatever you're using, it would actually give you an error message saying that each row requires a unique key. So we just nipped that in the bud, gave it a unique key. And then coming back up to our const, fellow villains, you can see there at line 25, that's what render villains will turn into is this table 
that we are creating starting at line 31. Now, that's not the end of it. There is one other thing I want to show you, and that is the layout. The layout is how the page actually looks entirely. So this layout is going to give us the scaffolding of our page, if you will. So you can see everything on the page is encased in a fluid grid, and that's bootstrap speak. So that just says it's going to be grid that's in a fluid layout, so it's going to be able to take up the whole page. Then you can see I've got a row, and we make rows inside of grids, and a row will contain columns. And Bootstrap, if you're not used to it, has a 12-column layout. So it's got rows on the page, and it's got 12 columns across each row that you can work with. And if you were to create a row inside another column, that row would have 12 smaller columns to work with. So you get used to the idea of working with 12 columns in a row. So inside our column, you can see I'm creating a row, justify content center, which is, again, bootstrap that just says center what I'm about to show you. And that's where we put our nav menu, is inside that top row. And the nav menu is what I showed you earlier with all the link containers pointing to fellow villains, home, me, sign in, that kind of thing. Then just below that, we have another row with Justify Content Center and a column with a class name of Justify Content Left. So this says center our row, but for this one column, put everything off to the left inside that centered row. You'll see what that looks like when we get into our next video of actually testing the UI. Then we give it props.children. Props.children is something interesting in React. It actually takes properties into our uh, function. And that's what this export default props is. That props is the input, and that's where we get props.children. So this is actually a special React object. So we can pass any properties we want into our function, and we can get it rendered as props.children. So what are the children here? It's whatever nav menu link container we clicked on. So if we clicked on, say, home, then that props.children would be our home that we're exporting. Props.children would be fellow villains if we clicked on fellow villains in our nav menu. So the props.children is whatever we happen to click on in our nav menu. Props.children could be other things based on whatever component we're in and whatever we've passed in as properties. But in this case, it's just going to be the component that we've told it to render. So that's about it for our pages here. One other thing that I do want to show you that we really don't have to work with that much is the index.js. Clicked on the wrong one there. I apologize for that. But index.js is where we fire off everything. Now, we're not going to have to work on this much. But if you look at line 22, you'll see react-dom.render. That's the starting point for our application. So index.js fires off this React DOM. That creates a provider, which is used in uh, Redux. And that's where we set up our store. We'll get into that in a future module. We also have the connected router, which is a router that we've set up. And it's got a history module. So when we click our back button, something will happen. And then we have an app is where everything gets fired off at. That's where all of our application is going to show up. But we won't be spending a lot of time in here. This is already set up for us. So that's it for the pages that we want to see. Now let's go ahead and jump back into a summary of what we've done in this video and see where we move on to next. So just a really brief summary of what we've done in this short video is we crafted the new UI using JSX. But we do have that new UI, and it's using JSX. So in our next video, what I want to show you is how the UI actually looks and functions.